And now Nancy will help me light the tree. And again, a very Merry Christmas. It was a Sunday morning, December 25th, and under the tree, there was a good chance that Santa brought you a Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo! a Barbie, Ghostbuster Proton Packs, Micro Machines, or Dolly Surprise. It was the last year of the Reagan administration. The Winter Olympics took place in Calgary, and the Summer Olympics were held in Seoul, South Korea. NASA resumed space flights after the Challenger disaster, Rihanna was born at the beginning of the year, and Michael Sarah was born that summer. This was the year, 1988. Everybody loves Christmas, but who needs Jack Frost nipping when you can have Bob Hope joking in the Florida sunshine? Bob Ho -ho Hope's Jolly Christmas Show. Monday. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. Good night. These guys have a lot of trouble with Herbie Watts. Need to work on traffic control here. The movie, Herbie the Love Bug, of course, starred Dean Jones, Michelle Lee, Buddy Hackett, David Tomlinson. Of course, most of all, it starred Herbie. Whatever happened to predictability? Come, on, come, on. come here, little girl. Oh, ho, ho, Michelle. <laughs> Ho oh, ho, Joey. Oh, Michelle, that's not Joey. That's Santa Claus. See? It is Joey. The Tanner family, along with Joey, all head to a Christmas family reunion, but the plane needs to make an emergency landing and is grounded on Christmas Eve. After decorating the coat rack and eating a vending machine Christmas dinner, Santa appears, and so does the missing presents. Kitty. This morning's paper, Frank? Oh, who's that? She's pretty. She's <laughs> dead, Frank. Apparently this 80-year-old grandmother was watching your Scrooge promo last night and she just she just keeled over. It scared her to death. This is terrific! Bill Murray plays Frank Cross in his mother and take of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. An uncaring television executive, Frank is visited by the three ghosts to reevaluate his actions, right the wrongs of his past, and reconnect with the love of his life, Claire. At the end, Frank gives us a great redemption speech, which Bill Murray improvised most of it. Did I forget something, big man? God bless us. Hi, John. How are you? I suppose you have Christmas plans, huh? Oh, yes, I do. I'm, I'm, uh, I thought I'd have a traditional Christmas. I'm gonna go visit my grandparents. Oh, that's very nice. Guess you'll have fun, huh? Well, I doubt it. They're both dead. <laughs> Then Eileen plays Santa on Day by Day. The stores are open late tonight on the size 4. It
only spent a little on yours. All I could afford. It's embarrassing sometimes being poor. Yik, who cares how much you spend? Everyone knows it's the thought that counts. Oh, right, a calculator. <laughs> For counting your money. This is it? Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> 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 Did I wake you? I can't be dreaming because you're not really my type. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Wait a minute. Was that a smile on the old man's face? An actual smile? We'd caught him off guard. Now was our chance. With the right combination of tact and finesse, we might just... Dad, are you going to get us that new color TV set or not? Unbelievable. What TV? Kevin struggles to fund the perfect gift to buy Winnie when you have no money. Meanwhile, he and Wayne are pressuring their father to buy the family a color TV. In the end, Kevin learns the valuable lesson that Christmas is about more than material things when he opens up Winnie's gift, discovering a simple four-leaf clover. TVs cost money, kids. Uh-oh. And money doesn't grow on trees, you know that. Yeah, we did know that. If there was one thing we knew, it was that money doesn't grow on trees. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch. The holly, ba -la 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 -la. Mike and Carol use the money from their vacation fund to pay the travel expenses for the Brady kids and their families to return home for the holiday. Greg, Marsha, Peter, Jan, Bobby, Cindy, and of course Alice each brings home personal obstacles that they must overcome to have a very Brady Christmas. Anyway. <laughs> I need you to open the front door for me. But who carries the key to the front door? It's always open. Well, Rose must have locked it because of the theft. Mm. Oh, I like your outfit, man. <laughs> Got a new tail. <laughs> I'm dressed like this because I want to convince Alexandria that the thief had a change of heart. <gasps> for once, Mary, you and I think alike. Why does that bother me? I don't know what to say. Can you say thank you, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Um, excuse me, Santas? I'm collecting money for the, uh, the poor punky Christmas pot. <laughs> Would you all care to make a donation? No. I live alone. My wife is dead. Christmas has become... Well, what I require is a Christmas companion, a lady of my own age or younger. So, uh, what do you think? About what? Well, are we on or aren't we? Oh, yes. Unless you don't want to. Old faithful. I don't know why Mama still holds on to it. Had it since the first Christmas I can remember. Maybe that's why she won't part with it. 
I want to hold on to my memories, too. The happy memories. Yep, but he's made it through and he's coming home. Oh, Leah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. I'm sorry. Frank is dead. At last, daybreak came and we scampered so cheerily while Mom and Dad yawned and gazed at us wearily. For Maggie, a pacifier. For Lisa, some dolls. For me, a big burp gun which shoots ping pong balls. Then on came the TV and we started to doze through all the exciting Christmas-themed shows. So, to those of you grooving on my holiday wrap, happy Christmas to all and to all a good nap. I just came by to see what today's secret word is. Yeah. Secret word? <laughs> I completely forgot. <laughs> today's secret word is here. Now, you all know what to do whenever anyone says a secret word, right, Cher? Ah! Pee-wee invites his friends over to celebrate Christmas at the Playhouse. This includes teaching little Richard to ice skate, sled riding with Magic Johnson, and forcing Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello to sign all of the Christmas cards. And since this is an 80s special, it is also required to feature Charo. What more do you want, Santa? Your help in delivering these presents to the children of the world. Me? Santa's helper? I could ride in the sleigh with you and everything? That's just about what I had in mind. <laughs> Thank you, Santa! Hey, Vern. It's holidays. Well, that's it, Vern. New Year's Day to Christmas Day. All the major holidays in one day, plus a few extras. That's a world's record, Vern. That makes me Ernest P. Worrell, head honcho of holidays. Vern, speaking of Christmas, did you get me a gift? Airplane tickets? A vacation? One way to Borneo. Dot the eye. I'll fix it. Police Academy, the series. Hooray! I'll tell you, Gumby, you are going to have a humdinger of a Christmas this year. <laughs> ah, humbug. Yeah. No one escapes from me and gets away with it. Now we're really in for it. But we still have to find our own special Christmas tree ornament. And this tree is full of them. Hey, look, Tugs. That must be the Sugar Plum Fairy. Hi, Miss Fairy. Our stage ring. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, no. Ah, 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 Oh, thank you, Santa. I... Raggedy's tick tock got them! Oh, uh, uh, wh wh where are the others? There's only us. We don't have anyone. Well, we can't have little things like you left out at Christmas. Come on in. Thanks. I'm, uh, I'm Harmony Star. Oh, this is Ernest. I'm Santa Claus. Surprised? Ernest volunteers to help Santa Claus find his successor and pass on the magic to children's television show host, Jeff Carruthers. Along with Harmony and Runaway Teen, Ernest breaks Santa out of jail, sneaks him into a film set, and flies the sleigh to save Christmas. Show me what it's all about. 
I got a good feeling about this one. stories I can't live without. You mean like the time we took Grandma water skiing? Oh, now, Silver Shovel. Is there magic I like should know? Grandma's fruitcake. And now, Grandpa's magic pine cone. Will you make this feeling grow? In exactly two weeks, we should see something. Is it time, Grandpa? It's time. Let's go. a bit before Christmas and all through the house, nothing was stirring, not even a... I ran to the kitchen, what could it be? Christmas crunch from the cafe to me! This crunch is special to make breakfast merry. It's loaded with yummy red and green crunch berries. Very sweet, delicious. But it's only here till Christmas. Christmas crunch is a merry part of this balanced breakfast. Almost anything you want to clap on and off. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clap. clapper. So the boy fell asleep in the Toys R Us store. And he woke up with toys from the ceiling to the floor. We've got the Nintendo Action Set, including the control deck with double game pack and zapper light gun for just $99.99 at Toys R Us. And we have all the hottest game cartridges at great everyday low prices. Love growing up with my Toys R Us kid. Toys R Us. You'll never outgrow us. We hope the special gift you get this Christmas lasts all year long. Merry Christmas from Eden Park. Snow. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, every year you ask if she knows it, she knows it, and then it comes in on the second verse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, Marie. It has been quite a while, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Cush Lubbock buys his wife Elizabeth an organ for Christmas, only to discover that the transmission goes out on the family car. Unable to afford both, Graham must make the difficult decision on selling the car unaware that the girls secretly had the car fixed. I hear Santa! Ho, 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 ho! This must be the Lubbock house! I can tell by the cookies they always leave on the porch for me! <laughs> Where are the damn cookies? <laughs> Uh-oh, we forgot the cookies! You son of a bitch! It's sometimes the world looks perfect Nothing to rearrange it's my party too, and I'm gonna let him in. I am not going to let Mr. Gorbley ruin the best Christmas party of all time. Ha! Let me. Yeah, who is there? Larry and Balky host a Christmas party and invite everyone except their boss, Mr. Gorbley. Balky, feeling sorry for him, takes pity and invites him anyways. Larry reluctantly agrees to let him join in the festivities, only to regret it when Gorbley makes everyone miserable. You've turned into a Christmas mob. <laughs> well, he's been asking for it all night. And we're gonna give it to him! games, don't you? This one's called Hide and Seek. You run and hide, and I try to find you. Run, boy. Let's 
said, run. Decision. Where's your snow live? Let's say soon goes right. There. Let's go uphill now. Look at that. See? Oh, I know. You're saying Bobby made a mess this time. You may be right too. I've certainly been known to do that. There we go. It's a rock and roll Christmas, featuring Pat Benatar. The Fabulous Thunderbirds, Little Richard, Eddie Money, with special guest appearance by Dennis Miller. Thank you, it is wonderful to be here tonight, especially to be part of this Christmas show, you know, because this holiday means a lot to me, and I would like to take a minute to talk about the Christmas spirit, even though it goes completely against the spirit of Saturday Night Live which is to get laughs at the expense of others, to ridicule everything, and to mock, humiliate, and degrade public figures for the purpose of entertainment. <laughs> There's so much marvelous Christmas music, it's difficult to cover all of it in one program. However, as the popular saying goes, we'll give it a shot. I, I think so, of course. <laughs> Here, sit down, my boy. Now, I'd like a puppy. Mm -hmm. Some stationary supplies. <laughs> And a duck. Mm -hmm. I think that can be arranged. <laughs> we just come from an um, ornament hanging party down in Steno. You've been hanging them. Why aren't these still on the tree? Tree? Yeah, what else are you going to hang them on? <laughs> I go wash up. <laughs> Bull accidentally delivers a truckload of toys that belongs to James McCracken, a selfish Scrooge-like character who demands that they be returned. Unfortunately, Roz already passed them out for the toys for toddlers and refuses to take them away from the needy children. This forces Harry to reluctantly place her in jail. Luckily, a special gift from Buddy and his friend Nick changes McCracken's selfish ways. Hey, Harry! Want a ride? <laughs> What's happening, Dad? Son of a bitch. I'm scared. Don't cry, Charlie. It's a dream. We're having a dream. The same dream? We woke up a half an hour ago. If we're dreaming, you won't feel this. Ow! Judge Reinhold plays Marshall whose mind is transferred into his son Charlie's body and vice versa after making a wish on a cursed skull. As Charlie, Fred Savage must now work as an executive and date his dad's girlfriend while Marshall goes to school and learns what it's like to be a kid again. The movie's not very Christmassy, but it does take place during the holiday. Waldo! What? This dummy thinks he's got something to say to you. Merry Christmas. 
you love it, woman. Admit it. <laughs> That's good. Throw a tantrum. Oh, yeah. Be an immature brat. Throw it. And we welcome the child with a name. Catherine. Her name's Catherine. Isn't it time for the presents now? Aha. Why every damn year are these things packed away in a tangled mess? Because even though you no longer live here, you still manage to make a contribution. I did not repack this strand. I'm not going to be putting up a lot of these. Just one strand across the even front. Come on, Norman. Get in the spirit. Mail call. Aren't you going to open it? Ah, oh, come on, Ebenezer. It's Christmas. Not going to open your gifts? Willpower. I admire that. It's Santa Claus! Guess who's having Christmas in the 60s? Oh, Mike, could you possibly have your nervous breakdown tomorrow? We're very busy tonight. Say hello to Mike Van Dyke. Um, we're gonna make the eggnog. Ooh, yeah. On a very special 30-something. But you didn't leave me. She was just a kid. She was afraid of her father, afraid of responsibility. What was wrong with me? I am going to produce a show that will touch the hearts of the TV audience, mm -hmm. will bring tears to their eyes, and we'll move the entire population of Philadelphia. Yeah, move them all the way to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Planning the annual Christmas pageant, Deacon Fry delivers live animals, including goats, camel, and a donkey for the nativity scene. He becomes depressed when the donkey becomes sick after accidentally eating some berries and cancels his big plans. Luckily, the veterinarian is able to save the donkey's life, and the church puts on a modest Christmas pageant. I guess it doesn't matter that I had to park three blocks away and trudge through a blizzard to get to my lowly little job reporting world events to the United States of America. I guess it doesn't matter that I gave up the best years of my life working hard so that I could have a parking space by the front door so that the owner of an 82 red Honda hatchback license plate number 40928 could have the comfort of warm, dry shoes at my expense. Days before Christmas, three children appear at the news station looking for Murphy. They have a note from their mother asking Murphy to be their mother as she cannot care for them anymore. Not thrilled at first, Murphy takes him home where she and Eldon give the kids a wonderful Christmas, including Santa delivering a pony. And you may disagree about this film, but I don't care. The biggest Christmas movie of 1988 was Die Hard. New York cop John McClane travels to Los Angeles to be with his family at Christmas. Arriving at the Nakatomi Plaza where his wife works, the building is taken hostage by terrorists led by Hans Gruber. John takes things into his own hands to save the hostages and prevent the terrorists from escaping. Merry Christmas. This is their idea of Christmas. I gotta be here for New Year's. <laughs> Oh, the weather outside is frightful. 
But the fire is so delightful And since we've no place to go This was Christmas, 1988. How awesome was the 80s? 1988 had a great selection of 80s films with a large selection of Christmas specials and TV episodes. In our next video, we will continue to count down the raddest decade and take a look at 1987. Click on the subscribe button to be alerted when that episode comes out. I'm the Christmas aficionado and remember, stay off the naughty list. Oh. <laughs> And if I had to think of one sound, it would be the sound of sleigh bells.